and they basically just ruled the nightlife of Melbourne and got into all sorts of badness. Um, but yeah, I think um, he's a much different guy now. Very grounded, quite quite um, quite spiritual, I believe. Like the consummate pro, he's really sort of worked hard to sort of rebuild his career. I think. Last week, Ryan, you talked about the relative lack of banter from uh, the South Africans. What about the Kiwis? Are they are they got some good sledge? Yeah, they're they're very mouthy, aren't they? They give it some. They do give it some. Um, James Lowe is probably one of the worst when we play against Leinster. Giving it non-stop. He's pretty bad. We've spoken about him. He's been on the pod before. So, yeah, they're, uh, there's a mixture of them. But their banter is definitely better than the South Africans. Uh, talking do, about do a big... Agree? Do we agree? Or... <laughs> Watch yeah. me get absolutely moved. See, the four South African teams coming into our league. <laughs> <laughs> Torn to shreds. <laughs> I know we've got a few sappers in our team, and I'm not going to say that to them. I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid of them at the moment, so I'll just uh, I'll keep quiet a bit. <laughs> Everyone just stay quiet there. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of a big South African that you're probably going to come up against, uh, Ryan, there was a big transfer uh, last week, Ulster signing World Cup winner Dwayne uh, Vermeulen. Uh, how surprised were we to see him make the move uh, to to Ulster rather than perhaps the Premiership or Top 14, for instance? Not at all. Best league in the world. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Is that your Is that I don't your know what to say. Hey, 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 no, listen... Rory McIlroy has obviously got the old checkbook out, hasn't he? He's must have some cash for that. <laughs> and uh, what were we going to say? Dwayne Merlin, lovely bloke, big friendly guy. I'm looking forward to playing against him. He, uh, it's, a, it's a good one, isn't it? Like, they must have thrown some cash around because there's got to be everyone in the top 14 wanted one and hold of him. He's, I'd say he's up there. He's probably the best best number eight at the moment in the world, isn't he? So, um, and he's, he's getting on a bit. What is he? Probably 35, 34, 35. So, um, yeah, I look forward to, to having a couple of matchups. We've actually got Ulster Friday night, so I'm happy we get them before he comes. Um, that's that's a that's a positive for us. Get it get it out of the way before he comes over, and then I'm sure he'll be straight there after the after the autumn uh, autumn cup stuff, won't he? Autumn cup is it an autumn cup anyway? Is the the autumn tests? Sorry, I don't know. That, I know. Yeah. Changes every year. Yeah. So yeah, we. It, Premiership's not what it's hyped up to be, mate. <laughs> take take a vote. No, we're all right. We're just we're fine. We we'll just keep quiet. Here. It's all right. Yeah, we're yeah, all yeah. we're we're hearty. The product speaks for itself. Boys, yeah, we'd have to justify money. ourselves here. Yeah. <laughs> you boys are all about the money. We're all about hearty rugby. Ah, <laughs> oh, RTG. <laughs> I just love the way you guys stay silent whilst Ryan just murders himself against the South Africans, just takes them all down. No one says anything bad and uh, just digs his own grave. Good, well played. Uh, speaking of you, you, Jack, you mentioned there were a lot of South Africans. Uh, you've got a few South Africans in your squad. Uh, what impact do we think the kind of continued exodus of South African players to Europe will have on their domestic teams compared with the national side? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I think our boys, they just wanted to come over and play a bit of rugby. I think what it does for the Premiership is obviously class. We, they are, I don't know, they, no matter what position they are, they all seem to be very, very physical, don't they? Um, you know, we've got Jackson Mullen and, and Yanis Karsten and I think Rob pretty much brought them over to, to try and smoke boys in the Premiership and, and, and they're certainly, certainly doing that. And I think, you know, they, those boys said that looking from their side over into the into the premiership was something they wanted to do for a while and they said that they are over here now they're loving it um they both of them love being in uh, in, in devon um but then we've also got a few of them don armand came over dave Ewers as well he's been with us since he was a bit younger but um you know we've had a lot of those boys that come over and almost fall in love with it and end up staying with us for for a while so um you know obviously jack someone like jackson mullen's definitely got um and yanni i suppose as well but they definitely got ambitions to go back and play for their countries but you know, obviously makes it, you know, very, very difficult to, to be able to do that if you are playing over here. But, you know, as long as they're playing well, there might be a chance for them to go back and uh, and play for their clubs. But like I said, they're loving it here at the moment and they're loving the premiership. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm glad. They're not, they're not just over here for their rugby. You've got to have a couple in the squads for their blights, oh, you? You get them cooking a barbecue in there. 
It's oh, my bride. Uh, the I reckon, I love I love my my my, my barbecue in them, but these boys are literally like rain, sun, shine, snow. That they are literally out it. there no matter what. A little bit of steak. The butchers. We got a couple of farm farm shops around here. Yeah. Um, and they love them. First names in they come. Yeah, usual state. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> It is crazy. Yeah. It's so stereotypical, but they all absolutely love it. And they do do a good one. The other ones are Argentinians, like see en- Enrique Pareto, who was down with you boys. Yeah. They love it. They love just getting out and doing a barbecue. So they're always good for having around the club to, to get a good feed and uh, and do a team social with. The same with the like the Islanders doing lobos and things like that. You see a lot of yeah. stuff on social media. The boys <coughs> digging up the 4G and burying, uh, burying a bit of lamb and goat <laughs> under there. <laughs> It'd be better to play on that. That's why it's yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. No, but I don't think it would change much for South African rugby domestically just because the schoolboy element. Have you ever... I, went, I toured there twice as a kid and it is the most nuts, nuts environment as a young rugby player. Like, it is religion. They have the craziest, like... Basically, all their school songs are like butchered national anthems like i'm pretty sure hilton hilton school is the nicest school you've ever seen it's got like a game park in it there's like giraffes on the premises and zebras and stuff. it's mental but it's just lovely but anyway their school songs like flower of scotland but with hilton lyrics it's nutty i was like that you can't do that can you i'm pretty sure it's not that <laughs> it's like mental but yeah it's it's more that tradition of just pumping out schoolboys and also apparently the schoolboy seems hella juicy apparently in terms of the PEDs. Uh, they had to clamp down on that soon because it was getting out of control. But um, <laughs> it's so competitive. Them. Yeah, because they're just so hungry to excel at the next level. It's like worth it. It's men- it's, it's savage. It's like a, it's a big, big part of their lives. There we go. A quick one. Oh, you were talking about the social aspect with the South Africans. Uh, Jack, you're coming up against uh, Exeter coming up against Bristol on New Year's Eve. So obviously you're taking Max Leif out for a massive night out on New Year's Eve. We're getting that signed off. Yeah, we'll have a couple of quiet ones. I'm down. I'm so down. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get weird and wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to try to go T Turtle now. Really? I heard you're a guzzler of the highest order. No, I've, I've said this for the last three weeks now, but I'm, I genuinely mean it this week. I'm going to try and. That's it now. What well, you said it every Three weeks. week, and then you get back. Every week. Yeah, I mean it now. I'm going to try and, like I said, I'm, I'm in this new stage of looking after my body, and yeah. something something bad always happens after I've, I've I've had a social, I've had a few drinks. I can I can never have one or two pints. I don't like the taste of alcohol for a start. So if you're going to do it, you're going to go big, aren't you? And so I've I'm and I think the last time we had a pre-season little trip away to Cornwall, team bonding. Um, Got absolutely obliterated for two days. Two days after that, I got COVID. So I'm like, right, well, that's not a good sign, mm-hmm. is it? So that's something bad happened. I either get injured or tear a muscle or I get COVID. So I'm literally saying now I'm te- going to try and go t to the end of the season. Yeah, yeah that is uh, a big, big commitment, Jack. Yeah. Wow. Oh we. But I don't, I don't, I'm not like a mid, I'm not like a, you know, a few, couple of boys like a, you know, a pint on a Wednesday. Oh, right, like, like a, a, like a nice red with their sirloin. Yeah. yeah I get you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not about that life. I'm, I'm going to go 10 pints or none. So, um, Man, I'm going to go last two minutes. This started now. Starting now. <laughs> first, first Europe away game. Oh, well, we're in the great city of love. And yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to give we'll it a I'll let you know. I'll let you know how I get on. Yeah. Good yeah. luck with that, mate. Good luck with that. We'll look forward to that. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a very boring New Year's Eve for you, Max. 